Man of God, thank you. Please take your seats. Zentreti shilata sekratas. Radambrekos kila mandre dedi shilida sile bas kuya bas kuya ba. Randrekos ki baba andre sila hasiata. Father God, we magnify your name for this day. For as always, Lord, you have prepared a bounty for us, and we will partake and be filled. We will grow by each word, Father God. Lord, I magnify you, for it is always more of you and less of us. Magnify yourself this day in this place. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Like I said, there is no day, there is no day we have preached and there is no new face. But the question I always ask is, where do they go afterwards? All together. We, we thank God for parenthood, not your parents, that once you're born, you're stuck with them forever. But here, the new faces come, they collect, they go. They are whipped, they come back, collect, they go. They are whipped, they come back, they collect, they go. They are whipped and whipped and whipped, then they have no more strength to return. But grace be unto them. For the portion that they take, it will not be removed from them. What you have been taught, what has been implanted in you, usually will keep you. Remember like David? He encouraged himself. Not because someone was there present to minister to him, but simply that what he had already been founded upon sustained him wherever he was. Praise the living God. Oh, we talk about the, 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 the son that squandered, the prodigal. The word prodigal is to squander, to waste. The prodigal son. We thank God that however much you waste God, in quotes, he can never get finished. And all of you are witnesses. Because I'm sure we have all squandered God. We have all wasted him. We have all poured him like old wine, but he's still there. Praise God. We thank God for his faithfulness. Praise the living God. Uh, it was already done a little bit, but I'll still ask the new people, please lift up your hands. If it's your first time here. Okay, one, two, three. There's somebody who looks new, but I see a person in red. I don't know if you're new. It's not your first time. I think the style is new. <laughs> we bless the living God. Okay, thank you for visiting us. And uh, as you visit, you're welcome to stay also. There's a decree that I will continue from there. Again, new, right? Do you have a piece of land or did you have a piece of land? Still you. Yes, you. Yes. They have a piece of land. And uh, two are the side? No. Not in Kampala? Not in Kampala. Not in Entebbe? Not in Entebbe. Okay. You have a piece of land in two are the Entebbe. It is strange. That is, that's how we talk. Whether you think you don't have it, for me, I've told you you have it. You've been given three months, and uh, three months is a very long time, and yet it is established now. Amen. Now together. Amen. You're going to be a very wealthy man. I'm just copying. Me, I'm a pastor. I'm not a prophet. I'm just copying. You're going to be a wealthy man. Your Amen. life, like it was declared, has changed. Amen. And when you become very rich, you're going to get a stomach. Please go to the gym. Now together. I'm, I'm seeing, I'm describing what I'm seeing. But it's Amen. founded on the word that was already released. Amen. You have an ear problem, right? Yeah. Even now? It's now okay. By now you shouldn't have it. I don't have. But it used to be there. Yeah. I don't know, something used to come out, right? No, but times you feel like as if it's paining. Just okay, like, there's pain. Right but now it's not there. It is well. Your ability to hear God has been released to you and the Amen. moment you can hear God it simply means his instructions are sealed in you and your path becomes straight praise Amen. God praise God Amen. I was only fulfilling the command the prophet had spoken <laughs> praise the living God then uh, the rest we shall speak Amen. we're simply introducing ourselves praise the living God now God surely is a marvel 
the message that was shared today for me was a blessing and finally or strangely it again resonates or agrees with what I have prepared and that simply points us to a place that uh, it's not really I that prepares but God Amen today we've titled the message when God writes to and on you that is just a title the message might be different from the title there might be a very small part that relates to the title but however it was said today John 1.12 uh, as many as believed as many as believed on him gave he the power to become sons of God that's a scripture that as many as received him gave he the power to become sons of God to them even to them that believe on him. It is an active word, but for me it is a finished word. You already finished believing. Keep that mindset. Why we keep repeating these things is so that you may keep that mindset. Keep that mindset that you already finished believing. You don't go to a doctor and then they start opening their book that they studied in second year. That ha, ah, this disease, we have to handle it like this. No, they already finished the process. So they're now applying themselves. And today, you're called to apply yourself. Praise the living God. When God writes to you and when God writes on you. We're going to share things that are common. The word write, in this case, I can use the word speaks to you. Because God speaks. God has written to all of you, right? You have a book. You, have, you call it the scriptures. God has written to all of us. But I don't know if there is a day that you think that this is actually a letter to me. We have a letter, the Corinthians, Galatians, you name them, to Timothy, Philemon, whoever, whoever. But have you ever considered that God has actually written to you? It is obvious he has written to, to us, right? But have you ever really thought about it that this is a letter from God? And we're busy crying, Father God, you're quiet to talk to me, Let send me to somebody to tell me one thing. And yet he has a whole canonized book for you. He has actually written to you. Praise the living God. I'm going to pick scriptures to introduce the subject that we already know, but they reaffirm our belief. Amen? Praise the living God. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 19 and 20. I'll read quickly. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, where unto you do well that ye take heed. You do well to listen, to hear these words that, of prophecy that are given to you. As unto the light that shines in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. The prophetic language, the words inspired of God through a man that are actually written down. It's a sure word, but they're written to you so that the light shines whether in the night, whether in the day, but it shines in your heart. So the word, the words written to you or the speech from God is not for any other thing but to establish your heart on God so that you can have the confidence to say, I finished believing because God already spoke. We have said many times, no more is it a promise. You're now div div partakers of divine nature. Praise God. Verse 20, that is 2 Peter 1, 19 to 21. For the prophecy came not in all times by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So today, take no word lightly. God is speaking to you, but I'm preferring to use the word writing to you because the sure word of prophecy is actually documented. Amen? So let us not look at the Bible as just another storybook. These are inspired words written to you. Not to me alone. To you. Personalize God. Own God. I think it was said today. Own God. Own God. And then these words will arise in your heart. That when you speak, you will speak with the boldness of God. Without fear. Praise God. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 and 17. I'm simply introducing the subject. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, 
for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be, perf may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And today, I would like to remove the word, of, the, the, the word man of God so that all of us may be thoroughly furnished and present good works. We already said that uh, good works without God, outside God, are dead works. However good they seem in the sight of men. But what is the foundation? It is the scriptures. The scripture is a script. It is written to you. God writes to you, but also God writes on you. Praise God. Psalm 45, 1 and 2. Well, simply, these are scriptures you can use for prayer. My heart is, my heart is indicting a good matter, is examining, is separating, is dividing a good matter. I speak of the things which I have made touching the king. My tongue is a pen of a ready writer. Thou art fairer than the children of men. Grace is poured into my lips, into thy lips. Therefore, God has blessed thee forever. So today, your tongue is a pen of a ready writer. Now together, God has poured into your lips and he has blessed you forever. You remember Isaiah? In uh, Isaiah chapter 6, I think verse 5, 6, 7, 8, somewhere there. I will read it along the way. The, the angel, the seraphim, took of the coals of fire from the throne of God and touched his lips and he was made holy. There are two kinds of holy. There is holy where you are separated for God, but there is holy where you just keep sanctification, where you do it every day, every day. You're improving every day. But in this case, he was made holy, was separated. The man was prophesying, but when that happened, he, was, he cried out that I am undone. I'm a man of unclean lips. I live in a community of people with unclean lips. And then God touched him. Then he became pure. And God here saying he has blessed you forever. So today, the Lord is saying that your tongue, your lips, your mouth is a pen of a ready writer. How the mouth and the pen work together, I don't know. But basically, the word of God is a record. Amen? The words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. You can replace the word words with things. The things that I speak, they are spirit and life. So every time you speak, it is a thing. You speak, it is a thing. You speak, it is a thing. Praise the living God. The message today is when God writes to you, when God writes on you. The Bible says you're encrypted in the palm of God, right? So he has written you on himself. But he's going to write on you as well. Praise the living God. Well, Isaiah, do I have to read it? I've already talked about it. Well, then said I, Isaiah 6, 5 to 8. Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of the people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts, then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live call of call in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar, and the, and they, and he laid it upon my mouth and said, "This has touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged." Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, "Whom shall I send?" And who will go for us? Then said I, here I am, send me. Praise God. Praise God. Remember we talked about angels a little bit. And we said seraphims, they cover the glory of God, right? Meaning they don't come here to the earth. But now, the contradiction here, here is a man on earth. I've said this before. This, here is a man on earth and the seraphim is touching him. Meaning, are we, we, our jurisdiction is boundless. Now together, our jurisdiction is there and here. Those have access to you when you have the holiness of God. And once we have said your lips are, are, are like a pen of a ready writer. So here it is today, God cleanses your mouth and you speak on his behalf. No matter how you struggle inside within you, 
you must come to a place where you have believed that God has sanctified you. And once you have believed, all the things that you remember will be erased. Not because they are not in your head. You retain knowledge of good and evil. But that does not determine if you are evil or not. Does that make sense? Knowing how to sin does not mean you are a sinner. Knowing how to bless does not mean you are blessing. It is knowledge given unto us. Praise the living God. And then, Ephesians 4.9. Ministers of grace. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Praise the living God. Praise the living God. So today, as you speak, you're writing. As you speak, it is written. All together. As you speak, it is written. There is a book of you. We are going to examine these things today. But while we are proceeding, I'm feeling discomfort in my chest. Do you have a problem with the chest? Yes. Yes? Oh, okay. Just wait for a microphone. As we minister, that is what it is. As we speak, you become. As we're speaking, this change. Okay. I'll, I'll get to you now. Do you have a problem with the chest? Yeah. Right now. You're in pain? Yeah, some slight pain in the chest. Okay, in the name of Jesus, be free of pain by the power of the Holy Ghost. Is the pain still there? Check. Is it gone? It's going. And uh, I also have wait, pain. Wait, wait. Is the pain in the chest gone? I think it is, it is getting relieved. In the name of Jesus, be made whole now head to toe by the power of the Holy Spirit. Is the pain still there? No, it's no longer there. We bless the living God. Even the other one you wanted to show me is not there. You check. You check. Even the one you wanted to show me, it's not there. You are trying to check this side. It's also not there. Praise God. Is it still there? <laughs> Welcome to the mercy seat. <laughs> You've confirmed it's gone, right? Yeah. How long did you have it? No, it's, it has been there for many months. Many months. Yeah. Okay, now this confirms you the scripture we just read that uh, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearer. I've shared the word of God, and grace has been imparted unto you, and thereby your healing has come. Now together, I can go further than that. You also get congestion in the mind, in the head. Yeah. Like someone is pressing your head. You feel tired, fatigued. Yeah. It will never happen again. The Lord bless you. Thank you. Small, small. Amen. We proceed. We proceed. Lately, this is my favorite scripture, but I'm yet to understand it even better. When God walks in you, 2 Corinthians 6, 16 and 17, it is 16, but I'll read 16 and 17. The Bible reads, And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will dwell in them and walk in them. That is my interest. Do you believe do you know, have you believed that God actually lives in you? That one is simple, we all know it. We are the temple of the living God. Do you actually believe or know that he walks in you? Every step you take, it is God moving. That every door you face must be open because God is walking. You need to allow that word to sink in your system that when you approach, whether be it your boss, be it anybody, be it a closed door, it will open by default. We have these doors with motion sensors, right? The moment you appear, it opens. The first time I found a door like that, it was at the bank. I'm not ashamed to tell you. I reached the, the I, I stepped, the door opens. I'm like, ha! I swear, not me. I hesitate. Then somebody crosses. One, I'm like, maybe this one has survived. The next, the third one, I also enter, very bold. Nobody knew my problem. 
My problem was I'm from Kumi. Praise the living God. <laughs> All together. So today, many of us are like that Bob who has found an open door and is scared to enjoy the grace. How together? God walks in you. God walks in you. Remind yourself until you believe it, until you know it, until it is no longer something you have to think about. I don't, we have said it many times, I don't come to church hoping to heal somebody. I come to church knowing that if there is anybody sick, they will go back healed. Out together. I don't have some chemical which I'm going to give you. No, it's just the words of grace. Amen? So today, that God walks in you. God walks in you. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them. Come out from your ignorance. Ignorance is not lack of knowledge, but and knowledge that is not informed. Little knowledge is dangerous. All together. We all know Jesus, but we are ignorant about him. We all know God, but do you believe? Do you know? Have you gone beyond knowing that when you step, it is God stepping? All together. Praise the living God. Wherefore, come out of them. Come out from yourself. Come out from that position of little knowledge that place of zeal alone and come into the true knowledge of God. Okay. And, and be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Amen. The one thing that separates us from God is rejecting, his, rejecting who he is. Very simple. And other people will help you reject God, by the way. Be like, ha, those people in their church, me, those things, I don't believe in them. And you also allow. Tell the other people, ah, oh, man, their pastor. Mm -mm. There's somebody who said he can't come to church because, because he does not believe a man can just know things anyhow. Like that one must be, some, they must be somewhere he goes. I go to the Bible. Very simple. He's a born again. There are people who like to suffer long. Ba, 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 ba. You pray for six hours, good for you. I'm not saying it is wrong. Amen? I, I love prayer. Like today we were praying, I felt I don't want to stop. But we had to present the word of God. Praise God. We continue, 2 Corinthians 7, 1. After that, that was the last scripture. The Bible reads, Having therefore these promise, promises, Dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. For me, the fear of God is embracing his word. It's reverential fear. And you have the power to perfect yourself. For example, Isaiah was prophesying, but he had not met God. Then an angel meets him, cleanses him, and lifts him to another level. And then he's ready to be sent by God. So some people actually write to fear the prophetic because some people are prophesying and they're not sent. Amen? Praise the living God. Until you have met God, how do you meet God? He has written to you. He's written a letter. But we're saying, first put the letter aside. We want to praise God the way we know. We want to worship God the way we know. We want to serve God the way we know. Praise the living God. Either you're moving too much or there is an angel behind me. I'm not sure. We are going to find out. There's going to be a distinction. And when the distinction, the distinction is obvious, we are going to find out if it is you or the angel. Praise God. This one, I got it from Musumba Laura, but she doesn't know how. But she will know how when I read it. Isaiah 3.10. Isn't that your scripture? Isaiah 3.10. Tell the righteous it will be well with them, for they will enjoy the fruit of their deeds. How many of you are, get angry with me when I say it is well? Put up your hands. No one. Eh? It is a scripture. So you're angry at the scripture, not me. Tell the righteous that it is well. The, the more concrete story is in a, with the Shunammite woman. But the Lord has dictated, tell the righteous that it is well. Well, but now 
the way you perceive and receive the word it is well is your problem. Like, but only it is well. He did not do like this. Yeah. It is well. The word of God is sure. The word of God is power. Once it is spoken, you don't have to feel goosebumps. Gone are the days when I used to feel, if I pray for you and you don't fall, then God does not work. No. Did I touch him? Did he fall? Did he what? Now together. That simply means you have, you have reached a place where you've apprehended, you've arrested the word of God that at your speech, grace is distributed. Praise the living God. And these things are not for a select few. It is for whoever chooses to believe. Whoever chooses to go beyond just belief. You become one and the same with what you know. To dream, okay, to dream about driving a Mercedes Benz is one. To wake up and walk to a bond to look at one is two. To sit in it and drive away is three. To be able to give it away is four. There is also five. Choose which one you want. By the time you can give it away, it means you can get many of them. It's no longer an issue. You and the Mercedes have become one. And thereby you'll have joined the Mercedes nation. Praise the living God. That one is not a scripture. <laughs> but because I've said it, it is as good as a scripture. Praise the living God. Today morning I was asked a question. I don't remember the question. Oh, something about natural resources. My kid, they got up early. They were banned from coming to church for today. They misbehaved. What do we? Is it what do we use to get something about natural resources? Then she gave me four, four different answers, but she was asking me. Then I laughed and said, but you, you've asked the question and you've given me the answer. Then she's like, oh, yes. Then she writes her answer. Praise God. Many of us ask the question, know the answer, but do not write the correct answer. Because we are waiting for someone to confirm what we already know. Imagine Abraham, Abraham, let's call him Abraham, Genesis 12, when he's told to leave his kindred. He had no one to confirm to him apart from faith. He had no one to confirm. But then again, that is not true. Once God has given you a word, it is a confirmation in itself. Altogether, it's a decree, it is law. It's established and it cannot fail. So we are called to move away from zeal alone and walk in knowledge. And thereby we shall take informed decisions. Praise the living God. Praise the living God. Like the question, where does water come from? Is it up or down? It rains. When it rains, water comes from up, right? But now the, the seas, the lakes, and the rivers, and this, where does the water come from? It comes from under. So it, it depends on you. You choose where the water comes from. But there's nothing wrong with having both. You'll ask another, where does water come from? From the tap. Some another one from the fridge. All those answers are correct. But we need someone who can find the source of water. Praise the living God. The subject is when God writes to you or when God writes on you. And now we are saying when God writes to you, we'll have the Ten Commandments. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 1 to 14. My God. Today you're going to press yourselves. We're going to read. Deuteronomy 9, 1 to 14. We're going to work a bit quickly. Eh? Here, O Israel, thou art, to pass, thou art to pass over Jordan this day to go in to possess nations greater than, greater and mightier than thyself, cities great and, and fenced up to heaven. Heaven is not where God is, up to a high place. A people great and tall, the children of Anakim, whom thou knowest, and of whom thou hast heard say, who can stand before the children of Anak? These are great people, right? Understand there of this day that the Lord thy God is, we, 
is he which goes over before thee as a consuming fire. He shall destroy them and he shall bring them down before thy faces so that so, so shall thou drive them out and destroy them quickly as the Lord has said unto thee. Just hold it there. So we are clearly seeing that the Lord, let me call this a writing. The Lord has written to you and he has given you a guide. He has told you what is going to happen. But it's upon you to believe this word. All together. The Lord has already sent his word. He has instructed you and made provision for you. The question is, will you and that word become one? All together. Verse 4. Speak not thou in thine heart. That is where God touches you. After that, the Lord thy God has cast, down, cast them out from before thee, saying, for my righteousness, the Lord has brought me in to possess this land. Not for your righteousness. The Lord has done it because he's God. But many times when we achieve, when we succeed in this life, we start to feel like we achieved these things. We did the, the things of our own volition, our own strength. But God is saying, it is because I wrote to you, because I spoke to you, because I wrote in you. Amen? Oh, I have written. Praise God. But for the wickedness, no, 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 no. But for the wickedness of these nations, the Lord does drive them out from before you. So, first, I would say, for the righteousness of God, he preserves and provides for you. But also those that are wicked before you, he will drive them out. But guess what? All this is based on the promise that you will go into the promised land and you shall possess it. Whether they be giants or things or whatever it is, God has bequeath this thing to you that no matter what you'll find there, however big it will give way, it will make room for you. Praise God. Not for thy righteousness or for the upright uprightnesses of thine heart. Yes, your heart may be good, but God is saying it's not because of that. Does, does thou go to possess their land? Not for that, not because of your heart do you go to possess their land, but for the wickedness of these nations, the Lord thy God does drive them out from before thee, and that he may perform the word which they perform the word which which the Lord swear unto thy father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Hold it. Now he's saying for the wickedness of these people, but then again he's saying it is because he made the promise. He that promised is also faithful to fulfill it. Amen. So it is because he promised. And now that God promised unto you, he has written it down to you, right? Have you allowed this letter to be your letter? Have you allowed this letter to be life unto you? Have you allowed this letter to be a land, a fruitful land, filled, running with, with, with milk, filled with honey? Have you allowed it to become yours? It is already bequeathed and spoken to you. Like you can have an inheritance. Maybe your father, mother left you $10 million in an account and you don't know it exists. You will never get that money. But it is yours. Amen? But if you have a wicked uncle, who knows where it is? <laughs> we continue. <laughs> Praise the living God. Understand therefore that the Lord thy God giveth thee not this good land to possess, possess it for, the right, for thy righteousness, for thou art a stiff-necked people. So God is recognizing that you have rejected his word, you've rejected his promises, you've refused, you're stubborn, you're this and that. But he's saying because he promised, he fulfills his own word. He's still giving it to you. And he's saying, arise and enjoy the goodness of my word. How together? Even with your hard heads, he's saying, I still love you and I've still provided for you. Will you receive the writings of God? Amen? Praise God. Remember and forget not how thou provoked the Lord thy God to wrath in the wilderness from the day that thou did depart out of the land of Egypt until you came, you came unto this place, ye have been rebellious against the Lord. So, for me this really highlights the love of God toward us. Even now we are stubborn, but God is saying, I, I, I still love you. I will fulfill my word because I'm a promise keeper. 
I'll fulfill my word because I still love you. I'll fulfill my word because there's a seed of me in you. I'll fulfill my word because I walk in you, I live in you. Even then, even when you walked away, I killed my son because I love you. I thought he loves Jesus more than you. I've always wondered, between you and Jesus, who did God love more? Yeah? Joshua. Joshua, he loves you more than Jesus, right? If I was Jesus, I'd be jealous. How do you kill me for guys who are stubborn? You'd rather kill them for me, who is good. Yeah? And on top of that, those stubborn people, you decide to give them inheritance equal to me. I'm the one who has suffered, but they are equal to me. Did you know you're equal to Jesus? Do you really believe you're equal to Jesus? Yeah? Do you really, really believe you're equal to Jesus? The Bible says... Jesus, he thought he not evil to be equal to God, but he humbled himself, right? And then you and him, you're now co-heirs. You're now co-heirs of the kingdom. You're co-heirs. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. If as Jesus, I would be annoyed. They bring you here, I'll kick you. Be like, you know what I went through. For you, just there doing your own things and now you have the full benefit of my pain. And that is what it is. Do you believe you're exactly Jesus? If you believe the written word, then it is true. Then you should have no problem believing it, right? And guess what? God has loved you even more than him that he has said that uh, greater things than these shall you do. He's saying you'll, you're called to do greater than what Jesus has done. But today, show us your works. And now for him, he lived only 33 years, right? For you, it is promised unto you 120 years, right? Isn't good and fair <laughs> in quotes praise the living God praise the living God haven't you taken away my scripture take me back okay against the Lord give me eight years also in Horeb you provoked the Lord to wrath so that the Lord was angry with you to have destroyed you God could have destroyed us but here we're talking about about the Israelites. But today, even you, you're not any different from them. Sometimes it feels like we're better than them, but no. Like me, how, how does God redeem me from Egypt? How do I see the Red Sea party dividing and then I rebel against God? People, there are many good things God has done for you, but you still rebel. You even repent before you get into the thing. Then after the thing, you still say, God, you know, you know. With those things of looking up, God is not in the air. Praise God. When I was gone up into the mount to receive the tables of stone, even the tables of the covenant which the Lord met with you, then I abode in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. I neither did eat bread nor drink water. Hold it. Now clearly the Lord, the Lord has written to you on tables of stone. He has written to you. This, if you never had proof, God has written to you. Imagine those stones right now where here, where you know that it is God who wrote here. Wouldn't you worship those stones? Yeah? Tell me, who wouldn't worship them? Me, I would. Because I'd be like, God wrote here. Who would worship the stones? Hey, okay, now we are increasing. Okay, only, we are only three. It's okay, let the rest lie. Now, guess what? Do you worship your Bible? Do you worship your Bible? Is it not the writing of God? Ideally, I'm not going to say worship the book. I'm going to say worship the content. And the content is God himself, right? I, can, I gave you my testimony many times. When I was a little kid, I used to have very terrible nightmares. Very terrible nightmares. To a point that I was taken to a witch doctor. But my mom gave me a Bible under my pillow. And every time that Bible was under the pillow, I would not have nightmares. So me, I started believing in the book, not the content. I didn't even know. I don't think I even knew how to read. The, the, you, reading the Bible is hard when you're an adult. What about when you're a kid? So I started believing in a book, that there's something about this book, that every time I have it, I'm, I feel I'm safe. That is how I was indoctrinated with belief. Amen? So today, if you had the Ten Commandments in Uganda Museum, I think you'd be there every week. I've gone to see God. I've gone to see what God has said. 
So God was clever. He knew that we were going to worship these things. Then he put these words in our hearts. We're going to see it in the Bible. Amen? So today, if you believe you could have worshipped the Ten Commandments, the tablets of stone, today I say worship the word of God. Because the word of God is a person. The word of God is Jesus. The word of God is God. The word of God is the Holy Spirit. Praise God. And the Lord delivered unto me two tables of stone written with the finger of God. And on them was written according to all the words, all the words which the Lord spake or spoke with me in the mount out of the midst of the fire in the day of the assembly. 11. And it came to pass at the end of the 40 days and the 40 nights that the Lord gave me the two tables of stone even the tables of the covenant. The covenant cannot be broken by anyone except the covenant keeper. And God does not break covenant. Twelve. And the Lord said unto me, Arise, get thee down quickly from the hence, for thy people which thou, remember the Lord is now denying them because they are in sin, which thou has brought forth out of Egypt, as though Moses did it, it was God. Out of Egypt have corrupted themselves, they are quickly turned aside out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them an, a molten image. 13. Furthermore, the Lord spake unto me, saying, I have seen these people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Let me alone, that I may destroy them, and blot out their name out of under heaven. And I will make of thee a nation mightier and greater than they. That is it. Now imagine the deal God has given Moses, right? It's like, these people, just leave me alone and I go and destroy. It's like God needs permission from Moses to destroy these people. Leave me alone, I go and destroy these guys. And, uh, and also blot them out of that book. All together. And God gives Moses a deal that if you allow me to go and destroy these people, I will make you a great nation and mightier than and greater than these people. I will take that deal. Now, me, me, Bob, eh? I will take the deal. I will be like, those guys, clear them. After all, you have said I'm going to be great and mightier than them. Isn't that a better deal? But as you read on, you're going to find that Moses told God, no. No. Blot my name out of this book of life but these guys leave them alone. If you have a shepherd who can give hand you over, you're finished. Out together. If you have a shepherd who can hand you over, you are finished. So also know your shepherd. Amen? Praise God. The one you have only tells you it is well and be like, ah, ah. There's somebody who's left thigh is hurting. I don't know if it's still hurting. The moment I touched, the pain left. I don't know if I should dwell on that one. Praise the living God. So here we're simply highlighting, we're trying to find out, much as you already know it, that God actually did physically, I don't know if it's physically or spiritually, he, he wrote to you a physical writing. I would use the word document, but it was a stone. He gave you a physical writing. And one of the reasons that writing you cannot access today, today, I'm sure you would worship that writing. Amen? You would worship that writing. And then the writing God gave you was a commandment, was a law. And that law came to keep you alert about, about your sin, about your guilt. It reminded you about the guilt that you carry. And uh, when you're carrying guilt, it is impossible to actually serve God. Or rightly serve God. You may serve... The people who come to church are like me, I'll sit behind because I'm not worthy to sit in front. There is no difference between there and here. Is someone guilty about that? Sometimes you're like me, uh, because of my life, the things I do in secret, uh, I, I will not be a minister. I will only, be, I will only help with carrying the chairs. You, you're serving God, but your heart is not... You, 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 you're guilty, so you cannot fully fellowship with the, with the Lord. And yet the Lord is saying, those things may I don't remember, come and serve me. I'm the one that cleanses you, prepares you, and releases you into ministry. Praise God. 
if you look at the Bible as a rule book, you will never be able to worship God. Religion. Now together. Many born agains are religious born agains. We are quick to condemn, we are quick to judge, not only other people but even ourselves. And like I've given you an example, you come to church and we tell you come and uh, maybe come and do intercession. Because of the other thing, you, oh, maybe five years ago, you feel you're not worthy. Like me, I'll only carry chairs. And for us, we're happy that you're serving. But there's a greater call on your life, and your service is not to man, oh, man of God, oh, the church. Your service is actually to God. So you're refusing to lead intercession, and yet God says, I want to speak to my people. I want to write to my people through your mouth, which I have sanctified. And we are saying, uh -uh, for me, I'm only good enough to carry chairs. Praise God. I'm also guilty of that. For me, ministry just started. I never had the opportunity to, to carry chairs, to be an usher, to be what. For me, suddenly I joined the church. Boom, you're now a minister of intercession. I felt that made a mistake. I went, I told the man of God. Said, receive the spirit of prayer. I started praying for people. All together. But I felt like they have put me in a position where I shouldn't be here. This is too big for me. Because I knew I didn't know. So I was arguing with myself. So as you pray for people, and those days, he's my witness. The moment I touch you, you will fly. Nowadays, I don't have power. <laughs> those days, even us, we wanted to demonstrate power. It is the only thing we knew. We didn't know the word so much. So, we're like, okay, as you do these things, people are falling, you now feel, people feel that you, you're, you're of God. But inside you, you're saying, ah, ah, there's power, but there's no word. There's power, there's no word. Until eventually, I gave myself to studying the word. And there I realized that uh, controlled power is the best power. All together. If they send Umeme to your house and the wires are naked and this, that, you're going to have a hazard waiting to, to happen. Controlled power is the best kind of power. You'll be able to minister to people with peace, with love, with joy, like a mother's love. Now together, every mother lies to their son that you're the most handsome guy in the world. My mother told me, for me, I believe. <laughs> if you don't believe, that's your problem. <laughs> All together, but every mother will tell you you're the best. You're this, you're that. And those things keep us. Because we trust our mothers. At least for boys. I don't know about girls. Praise God. Praise the living God. So if your parent has never encouraged you, you find that you're going to struggle with things in your mind. All together. Praise God. There are many more things I could say, but let's continue. Psalm 119, 106 to 108. Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light unto my path. I have sworn and I will perform it that I will keep thy righteous judgments. I am afflicted very much. Quicken me, O Lord, according to, according unto thy word. Accept, I beseech thee, the free will offering of my mouth, O Lord, and teach me thy judgments. So the word of your mouth, the, the, the written things from your mouth, these things are an offering to God. When you speak nice to somebody, it's actually an offering to God. In, in ministry in this case, you're praying for somebody, you're speaking life over somebody, it is actually an offering to God. And he's saying, I beseech thee, receive the offering of my mouth. Praise God. In the same spirit, Hosea 14, 2, the Bible says, take with, take with you words, and turn to the Lord. Say unto him, take away iniquity and receive us graciously. So we will render the calves of our lips. Your words are like a calf offering. A calf is a cow, right? It's from a cow. It's like a calf offering. Tender meat. It is precious to God. So do not look at your words as anything very light. When God writes in you, remember the words that proceed from you, they're a gift from God. Not everybody 
can speak kindly. Not everybody has grace, the grace that you carry. We just spoke to him and uh, something of months has just left like that. I remember I'm seven said, Pastor, stop touching people. It's in agreement with the scriptures. The Bible says, lay hands not suddenly on, on people. For when you touch some, there's an exchange. If the grace in you is not enough, you will receive the problem and they take grace. But the only way you can have enough grace, well, there's no such thing as enough grace. It is grace in abundance, right? Greater grace, great grace. The only way you can have grace is by having the word of God in you. The word of your mouth must have life. Amen? So you may come and say, I want more grace. We'll say, receive. But uh, without the scripture, there's no way it's going to land. Praise God. Praise God. Then some writings are unacceptable. In other words, some words are not acceptable. Psalm 19, 13 to 14. Keep back my servant also from presumptuous sin. Psalm 19, 13 to 14. Psalm 19, 13 to 14. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sin. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart, words come from the heart, words come from the heart, the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. So some words are not acceptable. So you may have to petition God that everything about you blesses people, is acceptable in his sight. And the more you bless people, the more you are blessed. Praise the living God. Okay. Words, unacceptable words. Speak to the rock. You remember that? Moses was told to speak to the rock. Numbers 20. Is it 20 or 12? I remember. No, 12 is about Aaron and the prophets. Aaron, Miriam. Okay, Numbers 20. Verse 7 to 13. I'm reading from here. I'm reading a little faster. Because today is, it, it is, it's a very long teaching, I think. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod, and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes. So God has given an instruction. God has spoken. God has written his word to Moses. And it, he has written it on him. And he's telling him, speak to the rock. Many of us have the instruction, right? Who have said the book is that manual for life. Right believing, right living. It was said earlier on. The book is the manual for life. And here it is. Okay, speak to the rock in their presence before their eyes. And he shall give forth his water. And thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock. So thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts drink. So the result of God's word is nourishment. He will nourish you whether in a desert place, whether not in a desert place. But it all comes from that instruction that has come out of someone's mouth. Verse 9, And Moses took the rod from before the Lord, and he commanded him, as he commanded him, and Moses gathered the congregation together before the rock and said unto them, Hear now, ye rebels. Moses knows that he's dealing with stubborn people. Hear now, you rebels. Must we fetch you water out of the rock? And Moses lifted up his hand. Remember they had lamented that they were going to, God took them there to die, right? Or rather, Moses took them there to die. And Moses was also angry at God. And God said, speak to the rock. Now, he's calling them rebels. It's fire for fire. And here it is now. He's, he's mocking them. Should we get you water from this place? Must we fetch you water out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod, he smote, he struck the rock twice. And the water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, and their beasts also. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, because... Because ye believed me not. Now, many of us, we have the manual, we have the scriptures, we have the Bible. 
God has, that is God's instruction. And it is so simple. When you go, heal the sick. When you go, raise the dead. When you go, cast out devils. When you go, when you go, when you go, minister grace unto the hearers. But when we go, we leave the instruction that just go and cast out devils. Go and heal the sick. You go and say, ba, 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 fire, fire. Let's fast for three weeks. Let's fast for two, two weeks, three days. This one, it is from the ancestors. This one, it is from, you have seen Christians suffer. Now there's a church for deliverance. Let's go to Mutundwe. Ba, 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 fire, fire, fire. The word is speak to the rock. But we have refused the text. How to get Right now, I could have told him that now ha, your case is very special. This one comes from five generations behind. In 1742. This, this, that. I explained to you, do not examine the donkey. The master is in need of it. All together. And all those things are nice. We can prophesy. But me, I'm a pastor. I can start telling you things and things and things and then you will go back thinking about those things but now all he's going to think of is they just told me I have pain it is true and they said go and it went chapter closed Jesus the Bible never says go and pray for the sick okay uh, well, is anyone sick among you let them call for the elders that they may come anoint him with oil and then the prayer of faith shall heal the sick that is the only part that I easily find. If there are more, it is still okay. There's nothing wrong with praying over people. But I'm saying, there's a better way. Just go and dictate. All together. I've never given this testimony here. There's a time, somebody within the family was not well. So they called, hey, call the man of God, call this, that, 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 that. By then, I was still working. I drove quickly. To reach there, I snapped my finger. The problem of I don't know how many days just left. I got disappointed. I got angry at God. I'm like, God, you made me drive all the way from there to here to snap a finger and go back. How together? Not knowing God was teaching me that slavery is your problem. You want to be a slave. You want to be physically present. Many of you, Papa, appointment, appointment. I'm like, can't we finish on phone? Ah, Papa, this one is big. No, to reach there, it is not big. In other words, in the sight of God, nothing is big. I was asked, somebody here asked me, but is, is, isn't it okay, is it, is, isn't it okay to, to also meet you? Something like that. I don't remember the statement. It's okay to meet because we'll talk, interact and all that. That's okay. But if you're bringing sickness, that one is that simple. But if it's to interact and share knowledge, that is also okay. There's nothing wrong with the meeting. But I'm saying... Can you look at these things as small things? Isn't it Isaiah that says that you will look upon this thing called the devil and say, is this the thing that tortured kings, right? Why do we magnify the devil? Because we have refused to follow the instruction of God. He has said, speak to the rock. But because we are angry at the people he's even sending us to, we want to strike the rock. Amen? Praise God. Where were we? <laughs> okay, verse 12. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron because they believed not to sanctify me in, they believed not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Now, God is saying these people have been given instructions, they have been given lips to speak, but they are not magnifying God by following, executing God's instruction. They have come to do their own things. And many times we ministers are the ones who cause you to believe wrongly. By telling you now, we, let's, this one needs prayer overnight. Sometimes I used to think that maybe I'm the one who is a lazy minister. Because for us we have no overnight, we have no prayer mountain, we have no what. We only come here, we pray for how long? 15 <laughs> 15 minutes. And even those 15 minutes, we have to beg you to come and we pray. All together. I'm not complaining. It's the grace you've been given. It's the grace you have been given where things are easy. And we thank God it's just going to get easier and easier. Because as we grow, it's just getting better. All together. 
But as it gets easier, there's a contradiction. You might feel, but this one is too simple. Mm -mm, I think it is not God. I need to suffer a bit. No. Jesus is the one who suffered. Well, you can call scripture that says, uh, count, do, do not is it what diverse temptations and this, that, and sufferings, and this, that suffering and ministry move together. That is also true. What kind of suffering are we talking about? Travailing for the gospel is not this physical suffering. You should be rich, even if you suffer. The suffering we are talking about, you may drive to Karamoja and have a crusade and there is no food. That is suffering. You have to drive back maybe to Soroti and eat. Out together. That is the suffering we're talking about. For the gospel, if you're suffering for, because of poverty, that is not the suffering of the Bible. Out together. The good thing I'm reading the Bible, so you can't say I'm, I'm twisting things. Refuse. For you, you've been given a word, you're a very wealthy man. If you believe it, good. If you don't believe it, it is no longer our problem. For us, we have released grace, right? But in the name of Jesus, you shall not fail. Praise God. Praise God. So, today, we continue. Therefore, ye shall not bring this congregation into the land that I have given them. This is the water. Let me use this part, this one. This is the water of Meribah because the children of Israel strove with the Lord and he was sanctified and he was sanctified in them. Is that the end? Yes. Now, the older generation, only two guys crossed over, Caleb and, and Joshua. The rest of them, God decided, uh, even their minister. I told you last time that you can die with your minister. If you see Uncle B going wayward, Please find wisdom to talk to Uncle B. Out together. Otherwise, your Moses, your Aaron, your Ha, your Miriam will go with you and you will you will see, but you will not get there. So when we say come and we pray, please come. If you want to go to prayer mountain, it's okay. You go and suffer. Even me, I used to go. I'm not saying it's wrong. I used to go those days. I think it's about level of faith. After you've reached the top of the mountain, your faith is established, you can now come back to the bottom. Some of us, the God of the valley is still our God. The God of the, the mountain is still our God. Praise the living God. So, you can have God, you can have word in your mouth, you can have grace, and yet, just disobedience once, in executing his instruction, then you will forfeit certain benefits. And I'm saying, be it far from you in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Now, another form. What is the title of our, our teaching today? When God writes on you or writes in you. Another place that God wrote. Remember, he, has, he, he did the Ten Commandments. But there is also, when he physically wrote on the wall. I'm wondering if I should read it. It is the whole chapter, Daniel chapter 5. It also has some, it has things in there. Okay. Let me read, it's okay. But we know this story, right? Where the king, he brought the vessels of the house of God and they used them for drinking and this and that. And God was not happy. And God wrote on the wall with his finger again. I think those are the two times I see God writing on, writing on something physically. But I've told you, if those stones were around, if you knew where that wall is, you'd go there for, what do you call it? These two as people do. And you'd go there and bah, 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 this is where God is. And yet God is inside you. Yeah? And it feels good. It feels good to, like right now, the Holy Land tours. Everyone who goes there says that the moment you enter Israel, the atmosphere changes. Man, you don't know. And you know you feel like, man, for me when will I reach? And yet the atmosphere of God is inside you. Not together. Have I told her? Did I tell my story? I have somebody who says that people think he's a hard guy. And yet he has never gone out of this country. <laughs> he has never stepped in a plane. So he's like, man, 
And yet you guys who step in these planes, you don't have anything that he has. He's a very rich man. So who is better? <laughs> Praise God. You know, it, and the way he said it, it was like painful. Eh? Like, man, people think I'm hard, but can you imagine I've never left this country? <laughs> and I'm like, maybe we go to Rwanda at least. <laughs> I don't know the feeling. You know, when you leave the country, you come back feeling, your accent might even change. <laughs> but the truth is, if you have left behind not okay, you will come back to what is not okay. Praise God. But for my fundraiser, I go with him. And we'll be like, yeah, to the world. <laughs> Praise the living God. What am I saying? There are illusions in this world. There are things that, the, that are common to men that we feel if we have not done it the way they do it, then we feel we are lesser than them. And God is saying no. Remember the Israelites were slaves, but they still belong to God. Now the Egyptians who are very wealthy, they did not belong to God. So God, be content with God because God has chosen you. And there's nothing he will withhold from you as long as you listen to his script. You listen to the word that he has sent to you. Praise God. Okay. Daniel 5. I think I still have one other long scripture. Just endure with me. Amen? Endure with me. That one is a request. But if it becomes too heavy, just riot. Say we want balance. You know like the, the artists. If they have hired you to sing, you go and sing three songs. They will stone you. But here you try. I'll just send fire. <laughs> Praise God. Daniel chapter 5. Belshazzar, the king, made a great feast to a thousand of his lords. That was a real party. To a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousands. Belshazzar, Belshazzar, while he, t- okay, while he tastes the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father, Nebuchadnezzar, had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes, his wives and his concubines might drink therein. Now, those are sanctified vessels, right? And maybe he wants holiness, I don't know. But in this case, I think he wants to show off. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem, and the king and his princes and his wives and his concubines drank in them. Four, they drank wine and praised the gods of gold and silver and brass and iron and wood and stone. All those things have meanings, but we're not getting into them. In the same hour came four fingers of a man of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster that is a plaster to avoid misunderstanding of the wall of the king's palace and the king saw the part of the hand that wrote six then the king the king's countenance was changed and his thoughts troubled him so that the joints of his loins were loosed and his knees smote one against another the king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers the Chaldeans, the soothsayers and the king spake and said unto the wise men of Babylon whatsoever whosoever shall read these writings this writing and show me the interpretation thereof shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold round about his neck and all shall be the third ruler of the kingdom just hold it so he's promising all those things have meanings but basically contrary glory scarlet is the blood of jesus gold the purity of god all together and he's basically promising things that he cannot fulfill but why is he doing that because of fear he has seen something right on a wall all together just like us when we're young when there's no umeme those days was you ibi 
in the corridor you start seeing like there's someone you just start fearing amen then you move with a candle <laughs> Then the wax burns you, you throw the candle and run back. Praise God. I'm telling someone's story. Haven't you skipped something? Have I read verse 7? Yeah? Okay. Verse 8. Then came in all the king's wise men, but they could not read the writing, nor make known to the king the interpretation thereof. This same thing happened to his father. Father had a dream, he forgot and called people to this and that and that. Then was the king Belshazzar greatly troubled, and his countenance was changed in him, and his lords were astonished. Oh, astonished! Now the queen, by reason of the words of the king and his lords, came into the banquet house, and the queen spoke or spoke and said, "O king, live forever. Let not thy thoughts trouble thee. Let not thy countenance be changed." The beauty of having a wife. There is a man in the kingdom, in thy kingdom, in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. Now, this is our God they're talking about. And in the days of thy father, of thy father, light and understanding, in the days of thy father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, was found in him, whom the king, Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king, I say, thy father, made master of the magicians. Astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. Hold it. You today, you have authority over all these things. All together. But many of us, Papa, Papa, my auntie, she bewitched us. Papa, Papa, this one, that's Juju. You're basically saying that uh, God has no power. I'm not saying this to mock anybody. I'm saying this to encourage you. That your God is bigger than any witch that can be. I gave you the testimony of a witch who came here. We led her to Christ and I told her do not go back to witchcraft. But she had the list to, to finish. She went to finish the list. In two weeks she died. Because I told her if you go back you'll die. The same way I've said it. Not with this zeal. Now you see God is saying that says no. If you go back you die. The Bible says suffer not the witch to live. So today stop worshipping your relatives who you say do witchcraft. You'll tell me witchcraft while crying, I tell you it is well. And you'll feel like I've not prayed for you. Then you go to where? For deliverance in Mutundwe. And you suffer. <laughs> I'm not saying the people go there suffer. But I'm saying you. You're under this grace. So refuse to suffer. Their grace is theirs. But the one of here is for here. How is this easy? I gave you my word. My mother told me I will never suffer because she finished the suffering. Amen? So if she finished the suffering, for me, I'm blasting. Out together. I'm using language you understand. The truth is, even your parents might have told you the same thing. But did you believe? For me, I believed. I, be I felt my mother is God because she helped me get rid of my nightmares. So whatever she told me, I believed. And today it has helped me. Even the man who anointed me, it is my mother who brought him. Even though my mom today calls me man of God, I still know she's my woman of God. Praise God. She gave me the foundation of things. And most of us, it is our mothers. I'm not saying the fathers don't. Praise God. Okay, 12. For as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding interpreting of dreams and showing of hard sentences and dissolving of doubt were found in the same Daniel. Let this grace be upon you in the name of Jesus. This is very special. Whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now let's, let Daniel be called and he will show the interpretation. I, I speak the scripture into you in the name of Jesus. May everything not be a mystery to you. May everything from God be crystallized to you. May it make every hard sentence simple in the name of Jesus. We bless the Lord. Verse 13. Then was Daniel brought in before the king, and the king spoke and said unto Daniel, Art thou, Daniel, that Daniel, which art the, ch that art the children of the captivity of Judah, who the king 
my father brought out of jury, jail. Oh, jail, I don't know. What is jury? Basically, the father brought them from, he enslaved them, basically. I have even heard of thee that the spirit of the gods is in thee and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. Just hold it there. Now, remember Daniel was not a prophet. He was a man given to studying the word. Altogether. Understanding the written texts of the prophets. He had the gift of prophecy, yes, but not the office. But this man seems to be even more excellent than the prophets. Now, that may confuse you because even I learned this. The Bible, he, he, among the major, book, the, the major prophet, the five major prophetic books, Daniel is one of them. But that is not about the prophecies. It is about the size or the content out together. So this man was simply given to studying the prophets. Today, when God writes to you, he's studying the writings and therein he received knowledge. He was wiser than any, even wiser than Solomon, to a point that God said to Satan, you are wiser than Daniel. Why did he not say you're wiser than Solomon? Solomon ended up in witchcraft. That is not wisdom. Out together. So this man made everything simple. Praise the living God. And now, and now the wise men, the astrologers have been brought in before me that they should read this writing and make known unto me the interpretation thereof. But they could not show me the interpretation of the thing. 16. And I have heard of thee that thou can make interpretations and dissolve doubt. Now, if thou can read the writing and make known unto me the interpretation thereof, thou shalt be clothed with scarlet. He's promising things he cannot give. And have a chain of gold about thy neck. And thou shalt be the third ruler in the kingdom. Praise God. So we are seeing that this man was a politician, Daniel. He, he served in politics. You can be a politician and you're actually doing it in the plan of God. Amen? Like Museveni. <laughs> Praise the living God. You've laughed. <laughs> May I've said it like Museveni. 17. And today if you find me wearing a chain, it is in the Bible. Yeah? <laughs> is it not there? You find me with the chain, be like, ah, now I don't know who has deceived Uncle B. It's in the Bible. <laughs> then Daniel answered and said before the king, let thy gifts be to thyself and give thy, reward, thy rewards to another. Yet I will read the writings unto the king and make known to him the interpretation. He rejected what the king offered because it was not his to give. Like today, I've told you, I've been through this. There are people who have offered me money to go and prophesy to them or I don't know, whatever reason they called me. But the reason is they may be in trouble and they're offering me money. And sometimes those offers come when you need money. But I was, I'm like, no, I will not sell the gift of God because the consequence is heavy. Altogether, the consequence is heavy. The testimony of my mother, again, is the one that guides me. She did not have much, did not have much, but I'm a product of her words. Altogether. If she had compromised, maybe I would not be here. So my job is also to try and do my best, not to compromise. 18. O thou king, the king, the most high God, give Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor. And for the majesty that he gave him, all, he gave him all people, nations and, and languages, trembled and feared before him, whom he would... Him, whom he would, he slew, and whom he would, he kept alive, and whom he would, he set up, and whom he would, he put down. The man had power. But when, this, when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride, he was deposed from the kingly throne, and, that, and they took his glory from him. Is that clear? 
the man had extreme power but pride caused God to bring him back to level back to the ground to a point that he was he for seven years he ate grass like an and like a wild animal so God is God and those things for some reason he doesn't do them to the ones he loves but then why did he establish Nebuchadnezzar Nebuchadnezzar was a king by God's purpose by God's will it was prophesied to the other kings who were being funny and they said to actually Hezekiah that these guys are going to come and do this and that and that but let's continue where are we 21 I'm looking for verse 20 let's finish this and he was driven from the sons of men and his heart was made like okay like the beast and his dwelling was with the wild asses they fed him they fed him with grass like oxen and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till he knew that the most high God ruled in the kingdom of men and that he appointed over it to whoever he will praise God so today you can fight with Museveni but the Bible has said how together our power I like Bobby Boyne I like him his name is like mine why won't I like him yeah but any man that is in authority even if he's bad leave him to God how together God is able to bring a man down or lift a man up and thou his son O Belshazzar has not humbled thine heart though thou knowest all this 23 but thou hast lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven and they have brought the vessels of his house before thee and thou and thy lords and thy wives and thy concubines have drunk wine in them and thou hast praised the gods of silver and gold and brass and iron and wood and stone which see not no hear no no and the the God in whose hand thy breath is and whose are all thy ways has thou not glorified next that is what I needed us to see then was the part of the land of the of the hand sent from him and his writing was written so we're saying when God writes to you in this case and his and this is the writing that was written Mene Mene Tekel, that one, Afasin. This is the interpretation of the thing. Mene, God has numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Tekel, thou art weighed in the balances and, 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 and art found wanting. Perez, the kingdom, of, the kingdom is divided and given to the, to the Medes and Persians. The division of the kingdom those who know the who know history you know these stories they then commanded belshazzar and they clothed daniel with scarlet and put a chain of gold about his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler of the kingdom in that night was belshazzar the king of the chaldeans slain that night he was killed he died next 31 i think is the last verse and Darius the Median took the kingdom being about three score and two years old 32 years old now we remember Darius as you read on you're going to find that Darius is he, he served God he believed God so when you refuse the script the writings of God he will write to you another letter and if you refuse he will send someone to take over so God in effect handed the kingdom over to Daniel and also brought another king who would serve and Daniel continued to serve I think he served with six kings if I remember correctly praise God so Daniel was a politician that believed in God to a point that he was even greater than the prophets by way of revelation the man gave you the end of the Bible before it was even written so you want to prophesy you don't have to be called prophet just dig into the writings of God dig into the instructions of God you can even speak without conviction just say the Bible says this which means this is going to happen you've not prophesied but you've picked a prophetic word and given it life you don't have to fast feel you don't have to have sung seven songs you don't have to have a man of God around you 
you just have to believe that God is the one who wrote this thing and he that wrote them is the same one that causes them to come to pass. Praise God. And once you put that in you, you will find that ministry is simple. You will find ministry is so simple. People will no longer threaten you. You will no longer... When you have a dream, you will not wake up shivering. Papa, I had the dream. I had the dream. Papa, papa. That title, papa, it is associated with problems. The moment someone starts, papa, I know. <laughs> All together. So, we are teaching you the word. Accept the word the way it is. Don't try to add soup on it. The word is perfect the way it is. Just take the word. God has said this. Okay, it is true. If someone says, you, you're finished. God has said, uh, any word spoken against me, I shall condemn. Ah, uh, condemned. I can't, it's that simple. You don't have to go to prayer mountain. Amen? But if you still want to call me Papa, it's okay. <laughs> I enjoy the title. <laughs> Praise the living God. Now, we have seen two cases where God has written to, he wrote to the Israelites, the Ten Commandments, and he has also written, he wrote to the king. Now, we want to talk about you. Give me Second Corinthians chapter 3, traditional scripture. We have shared this scripture many times and will never stop. Because every time we share it, maybe there's a new revelation. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. Do we begin again to commend ourselves or need we as some others? Epistles of commendation from you or letters of commendation from you. When we come to you with the word of God, we are not commending ourselves. We are not announcing ourselves to you. We are simply sharing. And then we also don't need you to acknowledge and approve of us. The message is self-approving. Amen? Verse 2. You are our epistle. An epistle is a letter. A letter is written. You are our epistle written in our hearts. You are written in our hearts. Known and read of all men. Now together. These are the writings of God. Continue. Verse 3. For as much as you are manifestly declared to be the peace of Christ, you are the writing of Christ. You are the writing of Christ ministered by us. This is Paul writing. Written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God. Not on tables of stone like with Moses, but on fleshly tables of the heart. So today... The writing is no longer in a book alone. You are the writing. That's why I can come here and I just read from the book written about you. It is written about you, but it's in my library. The question is, will you believe that? I'm feeling the anointing. I don't know. I think God wants me to prophesy. Now together. You're written. Your life is written. And it's in my library. That's why I have access to information about you. So, when you appear before a servant of God, I've shared this before, do you see a human being or do you see the voice of God? But the two are one and the same. You cannot separate them. All together. When we go to eat whole fish, I don't know if the, the people eat whole fish. People eat what? Pork. When we go to eat pork, forbidden animal, you've gone with Bob. But in between eating, Bob can say, that says the Lord. So there, it is God. You still have to listen. Gone are the days. Those days, people used to fear servants of God, prophets. Not in this dispensation. Whenever a prophet came, have you come peaceably? When a prophet arrives, the first thing you do is offering and this and that and feed them. And it was possibly not very obvious that they are prophets. You had to have spiritual eyes to see them. But today, all of us are born again. All of us have the spirit of God. But still, God has a secluded few that he has given your book to. But I say today, can you take your own book and keep it? Possess God, own God, that if I come to you and try to threaten you, your defense is the scripture. Like, yes, what you have said is true, but... This is what my book says. Now together. Yes, it is true that my auntie does witchcraft. But 
this is what my book says it is written in your heart not by men not by ink it's written by the spirit of god in the flesh of your your flesh represents god even your flesh is worshiping god refuse refuse to think you're less than who you are god has magnified you the bible says you are the glory of god but many of us we are still looking for the glory of god how together you're looking for the presence of god the presence of god is in you you're looking for it somewhere with sackcloth and ash fasting fast when you have chosen to not because other people are fasting not because actually fast because the bible says when you fast it, meaning there fasting is approved of god there's nothing wrong with fasting and prayer but if you're doing it out of fear or as a response to a situation then you're in trouble we fast with ami every year the first uh, first month i think first 40 days and then june usually seven days that's it but if you want to fast in between it's still okay it's still okay but if you're fasting for your auntie who bewitched i don't know who they bewitched your gods they keep dying it means you have refused that the bible has said there is no enchantment against israel who is israel today it's not the israelites it is you there is no more jew there is no more gentile altogether become the scripture okay for those of you who have had an appointment with me when i appear do you see bob or you see the oracle you see your solution altogether when you look at me you see your solution but you need to look at yourself as the solution that is when you will be a fellow minister like Paul and Barnabas God said separate for me these two amongst prophets they were separated they might have been the younger ones but they were still separated so these other prophets who remained they did not do the work that Paul did but they continued in their work also so maybe you're called to be the prophet to Africa but you're here under uncle B saying ah, papa I'm waiting for papa to say I will not say <laughs> out together praise god workplace ministers you are at your workplace you don't want anyone to know you're born again let alone prophetic because you don't want you're shy aren't you like moses who struck the rock instead of speaking don't be shy i remember back then when i was working there was a meeting they as they said ah pastor pray my prayer for most parts that's father god at the end of the prayer the md tells me uh, you shouldn't say father because for us we don't recognize god as father and this and he was a muslim he is a muslim from that day i said i'll not pray here and it never happened again if i'm not going to magnify my god here i will not present him it is your loss not mine because for me he's already mine that's what i'm trying to tell you that make god your own that even when uncle b has not spoken you're comfortable you're peaceful even when they tell you don't pray you you've not lost anything it is the loss of the ones who will not hear the words of grace amen praise the living god praise the living god so god wrote to the israelites he wrote to uh, belshazzar and then you are the letter now you're now the, the you're the bible walking you're the bible walking you're jesus walking you're god walking the only thing is you're not is you're not the holy spirit walking but you're filled with the holy spirit so everything you speak is inspired praise the living god praise the living god now now that you know you're the letter everything you speak is a letter we have now understood right now when i say when god writes on you and when god writes in you you're now the letter walking and we're going to read the scripture of a man who wrote a letter. Amen. Second Chronicles chapter 21. Give me verse 12. I'll read 12 to 15. Then I'll read 18 to 19. Something like that. And there came a writing to him. Okay, this is about a king who his father was good. Then he became bad. He had brothers and sisters. And because he was the heir, he feared 
his brothers and sisters. The, those kings usually had many children, many wives. So he killed all his brothers and sisters, both the ones who had the, shared the same mother and those who didn't, because he wanted glory, wanted the throne to himself, leaving nobody. Now together, that is the background of the story. You can go and read the whole chapter. Now here it is. And there came a writing to him from Elijah the prophet, saying, Thus says the Lord God of David, thy father, because thou hast not walked in the ways of, your, of Je Je Jehoshaphat, thy father, nor in the ways of Asa, king of Judah, 13, but has walked in the way of the kings of Israel and has made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to go a whoring, as in worshipping other gods, like to the whoredoms of the house of Ahab, and also has slain thy brethren of thy brothers, of thy brothers, of thy father's house, which were better than yourself. Praise God. So it was clear that his insecurity caused them to kill other people. So today, many servants of God, they fight other ministers because of their internal insecurities. So when you find a man of God fighting people, leave, leave that man of God alone. The problem is theirs, not yours. Behold, with a great plague will the Lord smite thy people and thy children and thy wives and all thy goods. 15. And thou shall have great sickness by the disease of thy balls until thy balls shall fall out by reason of the sickness day by day. This was a letter written to the king by Elijah the prophet. So you are the letter now. You are the one that has the right to write, right? So when you write, your word will come to pass. Some of you, hey, Papa, Papa, even when you, it sends a text, you will heal. It's in the Bible. Now you know it's not witchcraft, right? That, ha, Papa, I, I tried to call, he didn't pick, but the moment the phone went, they hit the cliff. Hey. All together, you're in contact with grace. Grace is not Bob. Grace is what you have believed in your heart. The word you have believed in your heart. There's somebody disturbing me. Your leg, your left leg is paining. Put up your hand if you're here. Whose left leg is hurting? Yeah, you're torturing me. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Is the pain still there? You're looking, eh? Get him, get to him. So, have we understood now? Now, give me verse 18 and 19 while you get to him. And after all this, the Lord smote him or killed him in, in his balls with an incurable disease. 19. And it came to pass that in the process of time, after the end of the two years, his bowels fell out. Okay, his intestines fell out by reason of the sickness. So he, he died, in a, died of a sore disease. A very painful disease. And his people made no burning for him like the burning of his fathers. Basically, they did not mourn him. They didn't care. They're like, this guy, uh, loss. Is your leg still hurting? It's gone. It's gone. Eh? Now, when you're sick, if I'm truly a shepherd, I'm supposed to feel it. Eh? So you people who are always hurting, depressed, what? Imagine what you do to me. I have 50 depressed people in my heart. It is very painful. You will not understand what I'm saying until you go through it. I'm sure you've been through it. <laughs> Even you. <laughs> you know, like, you, you may think that we enjoy serving God. Okay, okay, we enjoy serving God. But sometimes it's a punishment. I'll come here. If I don't like you and you have a problem, your problem becomes mine. So I have to first forgive myself for, for not liking you. Then I have to forgive you. Then we can now do the healing. It's word of knowledge. One of the graces God has given me is word of knowledge. It's very strong. That I get to feel actual pain, physical pain. It's not nice. Sometimes you're like, but God, am I the one who chose myself? Praise the living God. We're done. It's simple. But I can tell you now you need to fast for three days and go to prayer mountain and all that. That's hard work. The pain is gone. 
Amen. I, what I'm doing here is I'm trying to ensure that your mind arises to God's cause, arise to God, that God is instant. God is now. God is now. Now together. If ever you have a challenge, if it's your first time to hear me, just beep my number. I'll not call back, but the problem will go. It's called beeping, right? You know, English evolves. Nowadays, if you beep, then I don't know. <laughs> With all the, the, the benefits they have given us, is it by how many thousand minutes? Just buy once for the whole month. You will never have to beep anyone. Praise God. Let there be increase in all your lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. And those who are looking for a prophet, that's how I prophesy, by the way. I just give a word. It is up to you. You take or you don't. Amen. If you want me to tell you about your grandmother, this, that, I will not. I'll just remove a word from the Bible, decree, and it will be established exactly the way it is. What am I teaching us? I want us to depend on the scriptures. But today, I want us to depend on the meditations of your heart. Let that meditation be the letter of God. It has been written to you, but now you're the writing. I need you to arise. And you will stop fearing. Has a dog, dog ever barked at you? And have you ever barked at a dog? Yeah? Has anyone ever barked at a dog? When you barked, did it, did it not run? Thank you. And yet when you're barking, you're so fearing. So many of us, we are fearing, yet even the thing that is disturbing you is also scared. Praise the living God. I think God has been good. Have we finished? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have not yet finished. Okay. <laughs> First John chapter 5. This one I think is just for going through. First John chapter 5. Verse, five and, verse 6 and 7. We still have one long chapter to read. God, this is God. This is the one who came by water and blood. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who testifies because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. The water in this case is not Lake Victoria. The water is that water that came out of Jesus' side. All together. The blood that spilled, the water that spilled. They testify that that is where you are bathed from. In effect, you have the very life of God in you. Is that clear? So let's not get confused about water. Not Lake Victoria. So that water, that blood all testify of you and the Spirit of God also testifies of you. That you, that the Spirit, the water, the blood and the three are in agreement. We accept human testimony but God's testimony is greater because it is the testimony of God which he has given about his son. Now, a testimony, a testament, it is written to you. It's also written. Okay, verse 10. Whoever believes in the Son of God accepts th this testimony. Whoever does not believe God has made him out to be a liar because they have not believed the testimony God has given about his Son. And this is the testimony God has given us. God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his Son, Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. That is just a reassurance that you have already believed God. So the very life of Christ, the very life of God, the very life that proceeds from the Spirit of God is in you. And what proof do you have? You are birthed from the side of Jesus. Just like Eve was birthed from the side of Adam. Remember Jesus is the second Adam. Amen? So, you have this confidence, you have this record, this testimony of God, that you, you have the very life of God. And if you have the life of God, you cannot suffer. Praise the living God. Praise the living God. John 14, 10. Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, the things that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. 
So every miracle you have ever seen Jesus perform, it was God doing it. Every miracle you've ever seen any servant of God perform, it is God doing it. Only that God has given us uh, uh, where, to, where to function from. We only function in Christ Jesus because he is the begotten, the first begotten. Now, who is the second begotten? It is you. Amen? So, you're not just, you're not a stranger. You're not an orphan. You're not a vagabond. You have where you come from. And then John 4, 22, this is the Samaritan woman. God is spirit and the worshiper and his worshippers must worship him in spirit and in truth. That is you. Be honest with God. Just be honest. Father God, this thing I feel I cannot manage, but because I have you, I'll manage. That is a whole prayer. It's better than shouting for one hour, saying nothing. Father, I'm tired. Father, my grandmother, my this, this, that, that, that. If it were not that, if I was not born, I wish I was born in America. Now I would be... <laughs> the story is long. Out together. Praise God. Praise the living God. I don't know if I should read the scriptures. The time is not there. I have two scriptures, only two, like Musumba Lora. First Samuel chapter 30, write them down. Verse 1 to 30. You can see why I'm trying to spare you, right? And then Hebrews 10, verse 1 to 39. Those are the only two scriptures. But this, this other one of... of what my interest is in David encouraged himself. This is a situation where David, uh, they go and fight somewhere. Then as they're fighting somewhere, another troop comes and takes over their, their, all their property, their families. They take their children, their this, their maids, their this, their property and all that. So when David comes back, they're in shock. Yeah? This is a place called Ziklag. They went to fight in Ziklag. They're in shock. And uh, the people he was fighting with turned against him. Even if it were you. You remember like Moses led people to red, the Red Sea? Some started lamenting, did you bring us here to die? Whatever it is, they, 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 for us we prefer to go back. But even when they crossed the Red Sea, after seeing a great wonder, they still remembered onions and cloves and this and that. Now here's the situation. So these people are grieved, they're grieving. They have lost their families because they were fighting for David. So David, he had to encourage himself because at that point, even him, no. Then he had to make inquiry of God. He asked for a priest and asked if he should pursue or not pursue and all that. And the Lord said, pursue. And when he pursued, he got back all those people. But while they went to pursue, some of the soldiers who were with him refused to go with him because they were hurt. So he pursued with a few. They went and got back whatever was taken, plus a loot, and plus what those people had. Then they brought back. Now, on the way back, they meet these other guys. They find these other guys, and uh, David commanded that they also be given part of the loot. And they said, no, these guys did not participate. And David simply said, uh, no, let each one partake of this. Whether they refused or not, we are still one people. Out together. So, what is the story here? David encouraged himself in the Lord. Let me say, David encouraged himself in the writings of God. The writings in this case are the experiences he has with God, knowing that God is faithful and God will never let him down. Amen? And writings are only destroyed by writings. Remember we talked about Ahitophel, the sharpest prophet, who decreed things as an oracle of God and everybody feared? But David simply said, make his wisdom foolishness. Why was he able to say that? He knew God. He trusted God. Amen? Praise the living God. Praise the living. I've, I've tried to summarize, but go and read. There is deeper stuff in there, more than what I have said. But maybe, in order not to cheat you, let's read Hebrews. We're going to endure 39 verses. Amen? 
Hebrews chapter 10. For the law, having a shadow of good, of good things to come. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the way, the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices, which they offered year by year, continually make the, the what? The commas, what is that word? There unto perfect. Commas. English is not easy. Verse 2. For, for then, for then would they not have ceased to be offered because, because that the worshippers once purged should have had no more conscience of sin. Basically, we already talked about the priesthood. That here's a situation where there had to be atonement. There had to be sacrifices given for different kinds of sin. And uh, the Bible is simply saying, had those sacrifices been effective, the conscience of sin would not remain. That after this you've passed through today, you have to wait for the next year also and go through the same thing and same thing. It would be never ending altogether. So today we have taught you before that the conscience of sin is the problem, not necessarily sin, because sin was dealt with by the blood of Jesus. Amen? But me saying it is not very easy to execute because you're conscious. I've given you an example many times that a little child who steals sugar steals without the consciousness of a thief. So to them it's not a sin. Even if, even when you catch them still, have you stolen sugar? They'll say no. And yet there's all evidence. And it's still not a sin. But an adult, I say, if you work with Kakira Sugar Works and you take a ton of sugar, which is not yours, you're a thief. And you'll remain conscious. I know, yeah, 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 should I say? I know someone who stole money, a lot of money, and built properties. And whenever I'm with him, he's like, man. <laughs> Uh, me, uh, Matt, at least I benefited. All together. Let me stop there. I'll not tell the story any further than that. Okay, but in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sin every year. So every time you're making a sacrifice, you're keeping sin consciousness alive. And the Lord is saying, no, I blotted this thing out. Blotting out is writing away, rubbing away the, 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 the writing. That is what we are alluding to today. He rubbed away the writing against you, but we have refused to let go of this thing. Next, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he comes into the world, he says, sacrifice and offering thou would, would, wouldest not, but a body has thou prepared for me. That's the body of Jesus, the only worthy sacrifice. In burnt offerings and, sacri and sacrifices for sin, thou hast no pleasure. Then said I, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O Lord. That is my interest. Everybody has a writing about them. Jesus many times said, this day is this word fulfilled in your presence. Amen. Praise God. Verse 8, above when, above when he said, sacrifice and offering and burnt offering and offering for sin, thou would not, neither had thou pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. So remember the law? I said the law. If you follow God by the law, you will never be able to worship him because the law reminds you, it brings back the consciousness of your failings. Now together, praise God. Every time you see a policeman and you're not wearing a seatbelt, you start panicking. Praise God. Every time there's traffic jam and you see a policeman, you're like, these guys again. But maybe I'm telling you what I say. <laughs> Praise the living God. <laughs> and they're the ones who cause jam. <laughs> a bit. Okay. Brenda is laughing at me. It's okay. <laughs> then said he, I come to do the will, O God, to do thy will, O God, he hearkened, he, he taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. That is clear, right? 
the, the law is fulfilled. The law is a small part. Then there is also the prophets. But all those are good for our learning, for reproof, for counseling, for guidance. But today, he has taken that away and is saying, remove sin consciousness from yourself and strive toward the written message to you. And now you're the message, you're the writing. So, lean towards perfection. God has already perfected you, but your mind is the one that makes you believe you're not perfect. So, he says, lean not unto your own understanding, because your understanding is going to remind you of your failings. And then, when in P1, when you are number one in class, and in S4, and you, you're number 50, you cannot start claiming, but me, I used to be number one, I'm still bad. No. You're defined by what you know now, not what you know then. If you grow up in the village, and you are very poor, and now you're rich, you cannot say, me, me, I'm poor. No, that was then. This is now. I know someone who was a Ugandan and now they're an American, but they are here. Praise the living God. And some of you want to go there, but you have one here. Just tap grace. Then said he, okay, verse 10, by the which, by the which will we, okay, by the which we will, English, by the which we, we, we will we are as, as sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Basically, that body was an offering for you and it was a perfect body, free of sin. And every priest stands daily ministering and offering, oftentimes, the same sacrifices which can never take away sin. Praise God. Now, if those sacrifices do not take away sin, how much more the vain thoughts you keep having about yourself that for me, I'm not good enough, for me, I'm not this, it will not help you solve any problem. It only perpetuates or it makes the situation stay. And we're saying get rid of those things from your mind, receive a new letter. Amen? But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. He became the right hand man of God. From henceforth, expect, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he made, perf he made, by one offering he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. You are perfect. But that is the letter to you, that you are perfect. But do you think you are perfect? Out together. Now, the, the thinking is your problem, not mine. It's like a statement of pride, but it's also a statement of authority. For by one, okay, wherefore, whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us, for after that he had said thereof, 16, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their hearts and in their minds will I write them. So you cannot have the law of God, the law of the spirit in your heart, in your mind, and you still sustain the law of sin and death. Today you're perfect and your mind is now the law of God. Your heart is now the law of God. That's what the Bible is saying. But today, do you believe it to be true? Okay, do you go beyond believing and you know it to be true? Do you go beyond knowing and become the law? The Bible says you know all things and no one can judge you. But because you know all things, you judge all things. So you're more like exempt from judgment. And uh, another man of God calls it grace. And their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. But for you, why are you remembering them? God has forgotten, but for you, you still remember. There's only one thing I know God cannot do. He cannot remember your sin because this is the blood of Jesus. But for us, was this, but God, man, you know, yesterday, you know. Many times that gospel of repentance, you come repenting, but you're not repenting, you're actually reminding yourself of the things you have done wrong. Am I lying? Go, Ola Mukama. Go, Ola You see, for two hours, you're calling God, I don't know from where. I, what, what is the word in repentance? Is what? Hey. 
people on the ground bah, 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 bah. I see them I've, I used to work at Namboli and you know that was a place for prayer I stand at the window and be like now these people are suffering suffering altogether but it feels good when you speak in that voice it just feels good you feel like God is near you you feel goosebumps but God is very far he's telling you he has forgotten but for you in your repentance you're remembering is not is it not what repentance does repentance is to turn away from you 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 are born again you have already, already been turned away and we're saying you're simply bringing remembrance to yourself by doing by speaking praise the living god now where remission of this is there is no more offering for sin that repentance that coloring you talk about is no long it's now useless just say god father god i did wrong but i'm made right in your presence and this day forth i continue to walk because you walk that's a simple prayer i'm making things look easier right but as they look easier practice them and you'll actually feel you'll get to know that it is actually easier amen having therefore having therefore brother having therefore brethren boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of jesus today <laughs> how many have been to the holy of holies like papa the things of the old testament having boldness when your conscious conscience or consciousness is your when you're god conscious you have boldness for everything when you're god conscious you have boldness for everything even in the face of adversity even when you see giants you still say that is my promised land you can do like david that this man i had a pact with him that i will not harm him but you solomon when i go you kill him you might not execute but today what was given to mama about fruit this and that and that me i know about it i even know the person who is going to do it but it only comes through her as long as the children are obedient the blessing flows by the god is funny <laughs> You can grow big muscles and say, ah, no, mama, you old, you don't know. Whoa, wait. <laughs> Your blessing can bypass you. Just like that. All together. All, whatever he said is true. I, at least I'm aware of it. Not from the spiritual. I've had conversations with some of your children. And those are the plans. So when he said it, I'm like, eh, hey, good was in our conversation. Praise God by a new and living way which he has consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh the flesh of jesus is the veil is the access that was given to us into god so never think of the veil as a curtain the veil was beaten it was torn it was put apart for your sake and having a high priest ever in the house of god it's no longer a priest who comes outside and goes in he's there he's fixed he'll never move let us do, and guess what if jesus is fixed in the presence of god then where are you if jesus lives in you now together you're fixed in the presence of god but many of us are looking for the presence of god somewhere and there's wrong teaching that god is only here God is in you. God is only in you. Get, put it in your head that God is only in me. And once you know God is only in you, you'll be able to recognize God in me also. All together. Praise God. The Bible says, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Full assurance. No doubt. Doubting nothing. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water not water of the lake the water that proceeded from jesus let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering for he is faithful that promised and let us consider one another to provoke and to love and to do good works remember what i said 
just because I'm the man of God here doesn't mean I cannot make a mistake. But always guide each other. Especially the elderly. The elderly usually have more experience. Praise God. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Those who don't want to come to church. That is your scripture. As the, man, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, encouraging one another, or counseling one another, and, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sin. Now let me explain this willful sin. The letter has been written in you your conscience, your heart, your body, your being. And now, willful sin is, is writing another letter. Altogether. You start challenging the word of God by your thoughts unconsciously because you know that clearly I've done this. I'm not worthy to be in the presence of God. And yet the presence of God is in you. That is an example of willful sin. It is something difficult. You have to train. You have to train. You have to train. Meditate upon this word, my word, day and night, so that you may have good success. You have to meditate. You have to keep this thing resounding in your mind, in your spirit, in your body, in your heart, everything about you. There are times when you get angry at someone and quickly you, you forgive them. You're practicing good works. That the reason I've forgiven you is because of God. And, the, and then after you will laugh. Then they will say, but this is a local, yeah, they will forgive you. And you'll feel like you're mocked, but it's okay, forgive them. They don't know that when you forgive them, more is abounds to you. Okay, but a certain, but a certain fearful look, a fearful looking for, for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. So you never have to fight, God will do it for you. Next. He that despises, despised Moses' law died without mercy unto two or three witnesses. Now together. So even the law had power. And now here it is. Of how much sorrow, how great a punishment suppose ye shall be brought worthy who has trodden under the foot the Son of God and has counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified and an unholy thing and has done despite unto the spirit of grace. Okay, now for you who has received a certain grace, for you to walk away from that knowledge that you have, that faith that you have, for you to walk away from it, it's like putting Christ under your foot again and stamping over him. And God is saying that the kind of punishment you will receive is unbelievable. Remember, it, he's saying that it's worse than the law, that how the law killed. So people who died by the law are better off than you who meets Christ and walks away. How do you walk away? The mind, the heart. So once, let, let your mind be locked in God. Make up your mind once and do not turn left, do not turn right. That is what I'm saying. Praise God. 30. For we know him that has said, Vengeance belongs unto me, I will recompense, says the Lord. And again the Lord shall judge his people. Just hold it. This vengeance is not against evil people. It's against Christians who have turned against God. If you keep it in context, right? Next. Okay. Now this is the one. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. That one we all know, right? Because you can't report him to Satan. But now Satan, you see God, he has left me. There are those who try to threaten me. Me, me, I'm, me I'm going to leave the things of, of Barokori. Because in church, people don't care. We are not called to care for you. God cares for you. Yes, we care for you, but don't intimidate us. Yeah? Don't try to intimidate us. There's somebody who left church because the pastor didn't pray. <laughs> My God, I'll pray for everybody. She had uh, exams, so they called people who were going to do PLE and they prayed for them. They called people who were going to do 
O level, they prayed for them. People were going to A level, they prayed for them. They didn't pray for the campuses. That is what Chester from church. The pastors don't care. They didn't pray for me. And God revealed these things to me spiritually. So when I spoke to her, I'm like, now you're angry at the man of God. He's not called to pray for you. Pray for yourself. Fine, the pastor is called to pray for you. But if you're offended against him, you have no, he has no business with you. You'd rather come to me that, Uncle B, I'm not happy with you, but we'll touch here. All together. It's better. Because the Bible is clear that we offend many in our preaching, right? In TMS, if you're here for the first time, many times we're like, but this guy is over-teaching. How do you teach for two hours? <laughs> you may take offense, but don't be offended. It's still the word of God. Next. But call to remembrance the former days in which after ye were illuminated, ye endured a great fight of affliction. When you seem to have turned away from God, just remind yourself your one testimony away. You guys who have refused to testify, your testimony will remind somebody of God. That is how important your testimony is. Your testimony is a writing from God. God has written in you and on you, and you're supposed to display it for another so that they may be lifted up again. So do not refuse to testify. Some of you have big testimonies, but think if you testify, we shall come begging. No, even as we have testimonies, all together. You receive a testimony, they gave you maybe 15 million shillings. Like, ha, ah, if I tell these people, come and testify, it's okay. If anyone comes to beg, tell them to ask, come through me. All together. Because Christians are also not easy. Like, ha, ah, now that we know you have 50M, you just lend me 15M. I'm going to do a thing and bring back. Don't. Doesn't the Bible say do not borrow? Yeah, that one. Partly, Whilst, whilst, will, whilst, there's a man of God who says, whilst, and I'm like, now he's unconfusing me. Okay, the word, the, what is the word? Wilts, you were made a gazing stock, both by reproaches and afflictions, and partly, whilst ye became companions of them that were so used. Anything that was happening, people were watching you. And you are the one that was used to advertise the thing, whether in pain, whether in success. We continue. For ye had companion of me in my bonds and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven, in a higher place, a better and an enduring substance. So whatever you do here, whatever service you do, whatever giving you do, whatever meditations of the word you do, the time you've given to God, God is promising you that you have an everlasting substance waiting on you. But guess what? It is not in the future. It is now. The reward of God is ever present. He's a reward of they that diligently seek him. Cast not away therefore your confidence, which has great recompense of reward for ye have need ye have need of patience that after ye have done the will of God ye might receive the promise but no more are you going to receive a promise you now are a partaker of the divine nature you've already received the promise all together it's already received these scriptures were written those days that's why you need a voice today to remind you that this is now history 37, for, ye are, for yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not delay. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. That is God speaking to you. 39, but we are not of them that draw back unto perdition but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Praise the Lord. That is the word of the Lord.